Hey everybody and happy new year. It's Madison Jessiato Gilbert back once again for the very first Republican rundown actually of 2024. I'm joined by Keith Skipper and Tommy Piggott. Uh, we're super excited. It's going to be a very big year. As you know, we're now 10 months away from that presidential election, less than two weeks away from the Iowa caucus and just a few short days away from the national championship. It's going to be a heated night here at the RNC as we have our chairwoman's beloved Michigan Wolverines facing up against Keith's beloved Washington Huskies. Keith, what is your big prediction for Monday night? I predict Michael Penix is going to prove once and for all that he was robbed of the Heisman. <laughs> I think that uh, Seattle football, it sent Jim Harbaugh out of the NFL to the NCAA. And I think that after uh, Monday night, they will Seattle football will send Jim Harbaugh out of the NCAA and back to the NFL. And I think my Washington Huskies are going to take down the chairwoman, uh, Michigan Wolf Wolverines, and we are going to win our first championship since 1991. Cannot be more excited. Which, by the way, that 91 championship, who'd they beat in the bowl game? It was the Rose Bowl. They beat Michigan. So I'm very <laughs> excited. I cannot wait. I don't know if I'm going to sleep for the next few days, but, uh, you know, that's going to be the story of my life in 2024. So may as well start it off uh, right on where we're going to be at for the next 10 months. So cannot wait. Very excited. Go dogs. Uh, and beat blue. So sorry, Chairwoman, if you're watching, but I'm actually not that sorry. <laughs> Tommy, what, what's your big prediction? Well, I don't really have a dog in this fight, but I got Michigan down in terms of my predictions. I think they're going to win. I, I thought they did really well. Uh, the last game that they played, I thought they showed that they were really great under pressure coming through in overtime, and I think they're going to carry that momentum through and, and win a national championship. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting night. Both really great teams. Uh, obviously, I'm an Ohio State Buckeye, so usually always rooting against Michigan. Uh, but my husband and I have a cousin who plays on the defense for Michigan. Uh, so Monday night, we may be rooting for Michigan. However, I think Washington does have a really good chance to take the game. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but talking about predictions and looking forward to 2024, we obviously believe that it's going to be a big year for Republicans. Keith, uh, do you want to jump in and just kind of talk about what are we thinking as we head closer and closer to November? We're getting through these primaries. Uh, what are we going to see, not just in the presidential, but across the country uh, in these Republican races? Yeah, I mean, we're very excited. We have the Iowa caucus here in just a couple of weeks. Uh, really is um, starts that sprint. Uh, and not only will we start these presidential uh, primaries and caucuses, uh, we're also going to be starting uh, primaries uh, in our states to get our nominees for the U.S. Senate, which we have to take back. Obviously, we have critical states we need to pick up seats in, such as Montana, Ohio, West Virginia, Nevada, Arizona, Pennsylvania. Uh, and we also are going to get our House uh, primaries done, too, so we can, um, you know, we can expand that majority. And we also have a critical special election for the House uh, in uh, February. Uh, in New York. So uh, we're very excited about this. Of course, very, um, you know, focused on, on what's ahead, which is the Iowa caucuses, which is just a, a, a fun, uh, exciting kind of uh, event, you know, to see, uh, you know, the whole world, frankly, focused on Iowa and what's going to come out of there. We cannot be more excited uh, and we're ready to get the ball rolling. And all the media coverage right now is on Iowa. The candidates are all talking about Iowa. Uh, for those out there who don't know exactly what the caucus is, can you explain why is it so different? Why is it so interesting? Why are all eyes on Iowa right now? Oh, it is very different. You know, a lot of states obviously are, are used to primaries. They're run by, um, you know, your state government. Uh, you go and you vote. You can either vote early. You can vote by mail. You can vote uh, in, uh, in person on Election Day. The caucuses are different because it really brings your neighborhoods uh, together, it brings communities uh, at a much smaller kind of granular level where you are going to go and you, you know, we all live in precincts. Uh, hopefully everyone watching, uh, you know, knows that. But, you know, basically the, the a precinct is your neighborhood. Uh, and then I at, at these caucuses, you go and you and you amongst your amongst your your neighbors uh, choose, uh, you know, who's going to move on and, and elect delegates and all this kind of thing. But at the end of the day, uh, cast votes for uh, a presidential candidate. And so it really is a grassroots driven um, or uh, uh, function to uh, electing a president. Now, obviously, not all states do it. But in the first four states, Iowa and Nevada, both have caucuses. Uh, and it is a very um, it's just a very uh, unique and, and kind of intimate way of choosing our nominee. And, and some of these states, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. Uh, you really got to be thankful to the Iowa Republican Party 
who uh, administers the election instead of the state government uh, and all the volunteers that go and, and, and you know, are going to be working to make sure that this goes off without a hitch and not a repeat of what Democrats saw in Iowa in 2020. We thank all you that are going to be doing that work in Iowa and uh, our, our thoughts, our prayers are with you because it is a lot of work and we are just so excited to get this started. Yeah, big shout out to Iowa. And when we look not only to Iowa, but to all of the primaries and the big elections coming up, one of the things that we're continuing to talk a lot about is Bank Your Vote, obviously our big initiative to get Republicans to vote early. Tommy, uh, for those out there who don't know a lot about Bank Your Vote, uh, do you want to jump in and just speak to the efforts we've been putting forward on making sure that Bank Your Vote and BankYourVote.com can be used not only as a resource, but as a place where people can commit to voting early and really changing the results of elections, something that could have been maybe done in 2022 uh, and changed some of the elections like my own in Ohio's 13th congressional district if we would have had that advantage in the early vote. Yeah, so Bank Your Vote is basically encouraging, educating, and ultimately activating Republicans to bank their votes by voting early in elections. As our chair likes to say, you can't be waiting until the fourth quarter to be putting points on the board. And the reality is we have election seasons now with early voting. We have to make sure Republicans are taking advantage of opportunities to vote early. And it's not just making sure that your vote is banked, making sure that nothing happens on election day, which is important because we don't know there might be a family emergency, there might be something at work. Banking your vote is an important way to make sure your vote gets counted. But it's also helping campaigns and parties leverage resources to go after voters that haven't voted yet. So by banking your vote early, you let campaigns, you let the RNC Go after voters that haven't voted yet, which means that not only are you voting, you're freeing up those resources to make sure we get even more Republicans out to go vote. So it is so important. And then when it comes to Iowa, I think Iowa is actually a great example. You guys were talking about the contrast between the Iowa Democratic Party and the Republican Party. It's a perfect example of the Democrats completely abandoning Iowa. The Democrats are running from Iowa full steam like they're abandoning the entire middle of the country. We have Republicans dominating in Iowa now for good reason because Republican policies work. It's such a great example of Democrats abandoning so many Americans where Republicans are showing up and Republicans are winning. Yeah, and we see Democrats abandoning Americans all across the country, even in cities where they've been elected for decades. Uh, a lot of Democrats in places like Chicago starting to turn away from the Democratic Party. So that'll be something I think interesting to watch over the next year. But as you mentioned, bank your vote, uh, conserving resources, so very important. What many people don't realize is if you vote early, uh, on maybe the first day possible in your state, we might spend as a party $5 chasing your vote versus 30 plus if you wait until the very last day. That resource difference and gap can be used to chase those independent votes. So many of you out there that I talk to as we travel across the country are always talking about why didn't we win the independent vote in some of these races in 2022? What can we do different in 2024? This is what we collectively as Republicans can do differently. Uh, again, many of us don't like early voting. I get it. I, I didn't like it. I didn't want it to be this way. But the reality is it is this way now. We have to play the same game the Democrats are playing or we will lose until things change. Obviously, in each state, we can push for those changes. But until things change, we have to play that same game. So this is going to be critical to us as Republicans in 2024. Uh, but going back to Democrats and going back to what Tommy was saying, how Democrats have really abandoned the party. No one's abandoned uh, their voters and really the entire country more than President Joe Biden. Uh, he just did his New Year's Eve interview. And Tommy, it was quite a disaster. Uh, it really was. I mean, talk about ending the year on a disaster. We actually, I think, have these clips. I don't know if you guys saw these, but there are two clips from this interview that he gave uh, on New Year's Eve that kind of showed just how much a disaster Joe Biden is, if we could play those. I'm curious, what sort of holiday foods have you been enjoying over the last few days? Well, I've been eating everything that's put in front of me. But I've eaten <laughs> pasta, which I love. Yeah. eating a lot of chicken, chicken parmesan. I've been eating all, all Italian foods, basically. And ice cream. And ice cream. If you cream. look back and reflect on 2023, what sort of, of memories, highlights stand out for you? Well, one of the big highlights stands out for me is my dad used to have an expression. He'd say, Joey, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. So many people through the Midwest and, and in the center of the country, their, their factories are shipped overseas the last couple of times out, and, and they were losing hope and faith. So we brought a lot of jobs back to the United States. People are in a position to be able to make a living now, and uh, they've created a lot of jobs, over 14 million. And uh, I guess when I'm, I, I just feel good that the American people got up. They've been through a rough time with pandemic, but now we're coming back. They're back. So Joe Biden basically having a complete brain freeze in that interview, forgetting his favorite food was ice cream, making bizarre claims about the economy completely disconnected from reality, all to end this 
this uh, disastrous year that he had last year. And then on top of that, going on vacation or spending the end of the year on vacation, which is so typical of him uh, in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And he was asked about his New Year's resolution. Uh, if we could play that New Year's resolution, uh, which I just thought was bizarre. What's your New Year's resolution, sir? Anything else? That's the biggest one right now. So that New Year's resolution, for those that couldn't hear, basically he was asked, what is it? And he said, to come back next year. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that means. Uh, Keith, do you have any idea uh, what he could be meaning by that New Year's resolution? Uh, no, and I, maybe maybe he wants to go back to the U.S. Virgin Islands next year for New Year's Eve, but I think he's actually going to be kind of busy next year around this time, packing up his stuff and uh, putting it in the in the truck to drive back to Delaware. But uh, you know, he it's kind of par for the course. Uh, we it's really hard to understand a lot of things this president says. Yeah, and it seems like his uh, one of his greatest accomplishments, just based on that interview, was eating a lot of chicken parmesan. Which I love chicken parmesan, but if I was president, I would hope to have a few more accomplishments than that. I mean, Madison, how do you look at that interview uh, and not see a president that's completely detached from reality and has really nothing to run on? Yeah, I have no clue what he's talking about, per usual. Uh, I also ate a lot of pasta over the holidays, but at the same time, if I was president of the United States, I might have a little more substance uh, to say in my interview. So it's always disappointing, and it's always very cringy to watch Jill Biden sitting next to him, looking at him, just wanting to, like, stop him and talk for him. I can, like, feel the angst coming from all of these videos. Uh, yeah. Super awkward, super awful, as always. Uh, the New Year's resolution was weird. Uh, I think maybe he meant go back, as Keith said, to St. Croix, but... You know, who knows? Maybe he means just come back to life in 2024, which might be good for him since he seems like he's half dead most of the time. Uh, but yeah, overall, a disappointment from the president once again, who's made a lot of promises that he's never kept to the American people, to the people who supported him and voted for him in 2020 specifically, uh, and really looking forward to getting rid of him and voting him out of office in November of this year. It seems like every single interview he does, he talks about ice cream, which again, I like ice cream, but it's really concerning that that's all he ever talks about ice cream and aviators i think it makes it, he, i think he thinks he looks cool or something like that but honestly at a certain point enough's enough with the ice cream he has to he talks about it so much and yet jill biden has to remind him that that's his favorite food it really was a a, a very cringy interview and then more to the point of, uh, of getting rid of him and abandoning voters the fact that he's spending 10 days in the u.s virgin islands and he still hasn't been to east palestine ohio and while he's on vacation, the border is in chaos. I think it shows, again, this disconnect between Joe Biden's priorities, which are vacation, and the crises that are facing the American people. You think a New Year's resolution, for one, would be secure the border. That'd be a pretty good one, I think. Yeah, and I talked about this in Madison Minute just before Christmas, talking about the fact that you know so many Americans across the country didn't give gifts this year as a result of their financial status, didn't get to travel to see family members because it was simply too expensive. Meanwhile, our president's, as you mentioned, on vacation for 10 days with a nasty sunburn coming home, just doing his thing all the time, traveling all around, but not keeping the promises that he's made to people. And of course, as you mentioned, coming right here to Ohio, to East Palestine, uh, to talk to people that were affected by that train derailment, something he promised early on last year, still hasn't happened. We're going on close to a year now. Uh, and it's just an example of his not only carelessness, but his ineptitude for the presidency. Keith, what do you think? Yeah, no, this president is completely out of touch. I can't think of a, a, a starker contrast uh, to this president, uh, you know, wanting to talk about his diet, which I'm very concerned about. I'm concerned about my own diet, but I think I'm equally as concerned about his diet right now. Uh, talk about trying to go back to the Virgin Islands in a year and, you know, is coming back and just kind of taking his time. Meanwhile, on the border this week, we had 60 House Republicans led by Speaker Johnson going down there and trying to find out what's going on, how, you know, what our, our, our Border Patrol agents need as resources after uh, Congressman Gonzalez are in his district or were in his district, uh, talked about how he personally saw thousands of folks coming through Eagle Pass uh, that led to uh, him asking for Speaker Johnson to um, come down and Speaker Johnson jumped at it. So, uh, you know, this the Republicans in D.C. understand that there are a myriad of problems that need to be addressed. And it seems that the only thing that this president wanted to address over the last few weeks was chicken parmesan. So uh, cannot wait. That's why it's so important that the work we are putting in uh, over this next 10 months, why we are 
trying to get folks to commit to voting early by banking uh, their vote and going to bankyourvote.com and why we need everyone watching to go to bankyourvote.com and do that commitment right now is because this president has got to go. We have got to, so in a year from now, we can be excited that in just a couple of weeks, we will have a Republican president uh, because clearly this president right now is not up for the job, doesn't want to do the job. And so let's go and let's help him get some more ice cream at home and enjoy the ice cream in Delaware, which I'm sure is great. It's probably why he loves it so much uh, because he's got to, uh, it's time to put a stop to this. And that's why we got to go uh, do everything we can over the next few months to ensure that we win in uh, November. That's right. And we'll be back next week to talk about this, the border, and so much more on another Republican Rundown. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Go dogs. Thanks.